Now to a showdown on Spotify involving the platform's most popular podcast. Joe Rogan speaking out for the first time since coming under fire for what has been widely criticized as misinformation over COVID-19, specifically pointing to two recent episodes where he featured cardiologist Peter McCullough and virologist Dr. Robert Malone, both of whom have been criticized for their stances on vaccines. Both these people are very highly credentialed, very intelligent, very accomplished people, and they have an opinion that's different from the mainstream narrative. I wanted to hear what their opinion is. These podcasts are very strange because they're just conversations. And oftentimes I have no idea what I'm going to talk about until I sit down and talk to people. And that's why some of my ideas are not that prepared or fleshed out. Well, the streaming service has since posted a content advisory notice to any podcast episode that includes a discussion about COVID-19, directing listeners to a hub of facts instead and information from sources like the CDC. If there's anything that I've done that I could do better is uh, have more experts with differing opinions right after I have the controversial ones. Uh, I would most certainly be open to doing that. And for the first time, Spotify has published its platform rules regarding content, adding that there will be consequences for those who violate the rules, which include promoting, quote, dangerous, false or deceptive medical information that may cause offline harm or poses a direct threat to public health. Dr. Monica Gandhi specializes in infectious diseases and is here to offer her insight into the COVID discussions happening on Spotify and other platforms like it, social media in particular. Dr. Gandhi, uh, what you heard Rogan say is, I'm gonna have people on, then I'm gonna have on people who disagree or have different information that they can share. Uh, you've been a trusted source for ours for a while. So where do you land on this? Are you concerned by the conversations happening on Rogan's show and others in terms of of misinformation about COVID? Um, yes, I actually am concerned. Now, I'm not into um, censorship, but I will say that the issue that happened here is that if someone has an MD after their name and they are inflating um, the risks of the vaccine with the benefits of the vaccine, meaning what ended up happening here is Dr. Malone um, didn't actually invent the mRNA vaccine. Uh, this was invented by Barney Graham and others at the NIH. And it really is a safe and effective vaccine. And it just, it just works. Like it completely works. I work in a hospital, I'm working in a hospital right now. Those are unvaccinated are more likely to get sick. And it really is safe. Um, there are some side effects, but in general, over millions of people looked at it, the Kaiser Health System, Mayo Clinic Health System, these are generally safe with the same adverse effects we saw in the clinical trials. So if a lot of people see something and someone has an MD after their name, it can be very scary and confusing and people can think that they're unsafe and it's prolonging our pandemic in the United States. We are the least vaccinated of, of socioeconomic the same type of countries um, because of misinformation. So I think it's great that actually Mr. Rogan said that he will um, work harder to have different opinions because I'm, I don't think I like censorship, but I think it can really scare people when they hear incorrect misinformation. How does the medical community deal with some of the ambiguity, though, particularly in a pandemic where from the start there have been seemingly a lot of unknowns, doctors disagreeing on some of the science behind the pandemic? So how, how do you and others approach that with the general public and conversations you're having to clear up any confusion or mistrust in what, what people are hearing? I think that you asked a very fair question. Doctors are having different opinions. There are doctors like me who think that children are much lower risk than adults, which is just the truth. It has to do with the biology of the virus and have been pushing for school openings. There are doctors that think that schools still aren't safe. And that is a completely different interpretation of the data. You can see that, that Everyone has a different opinion about things. But the one thing is I'll say is that immunology is sort of indisputable and people can get naturally infected, but it's just not as safe as getting the vaccine. And I can I can just tell you with everything I know that vaccines work. Is, is, is the misinformation about vaccines the biggest sticking point right now out there that people don't buy into? Are there others that concern you? 
I think the vaccine misinformation is the biggest sticking point because everything else, it can be a matter of interpretation when you want to release masks, when you um, want to, what kind of ventilation you want, what children should be, if they're normal in school or not. I think that's a matter of interpretation. Vaccines are the biggest problem in our country. Vaccine misinformation is the biggest problem because those, any other country in Europe that are much high, have much higher rates of vaccination, they went through Omicron so much easily than we did. They had so much lower death rates and hospitalization rates than we did. They did better. And now they're going to endemic and normal life. Right now, the European CDC announced this last Thursday, said let's have normal life because we have the tools and we went through this wave and the hospitalizations and deaths stayed low. That is the biggest difference between us and Europe. We don't have the vaccine uptake that Europe has mm -hmm. because we had misinformation like what you just said. Where are we at right now in the pandemic? We're seeing Omicron cases go down state to state. Have we now turned that corner? Have we put the worst of it behind us? Um, scientifically speaking, what's the data showing you? So I am in a highly vaccinated state and we went through the Omicron wave pretty well because our hospitalization stayed quite low. We do have this problem with incidental hospitalizations with or for COVID. In places with lower amounts of vaccination, the hospitalizations were more likely to be really there for COVID, but we have crested. We have crested the cases and now hospitalizations will come down after this. It looks like by mid-February to the end of February, hospitalizations are gonna be back to a manageable level. And that is the question, do we decide at that point that we're endemic? which is a real term, and we decide that we live with this virus, not making it the public's problem, but the medical community's problems with vaccination and therapeutics. Mm -hmm. Before I let you go, spring break travel, I saw the level four warning for places like Mexico right now when it comes to COVID. If people are planning trips, it's not that far off. What is your message to folks who are going to get on an airplane and go somewhere? I really think it's safe to go anywhere if you're vaccinated. I really just... I believe that. I know the low, low risk of getting severely ill if you're vaccinated. Um, so I think you should plan like you did last spring break, which is if you're vaccinated, do whatever you want. Um, I think that we'll take just take whatever precautions the country is taking. All right. Some good news in there. Dr. Monica Gandhi, as always, thank you for taking some time chatting with us. Thanks for watching. Click the red subscribe button below so you can get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.